Hey there, everybody, and welcome. Today, I am going to present a solo playthrough and solo rules explanation for Tiny Epic Pirates, a game that's currently on Kickstarter, set to be delivered probably second quarter of next year. The rules draft uh, is already available, and while this may not be the final, final set of rules, it's a pretty close approximation to the way the solo game is going to play and the way the game is going to play in general. The solo rules are a little rough as they're drawn up in the rules draft, and a lot of the icons aren't explained uh, in detail, so it's possible that I uh, might be misinterpreting some icons. If I have a question about uh, what I'm what I'm actually doing during this uh, playthrough, and if I think it's a possibility that that the rules might mean something different, uh, I will indicate it as such. But for the most part, uh, this will give you a good sense of how the solo game is going to work. As you can see, I'm not using the print and play pieces today, but instead I'm using a program that I wrote to play this solo game. Uh, if you're familiar with my channel, you know that this is what I do. I write programs to play games so that and use those programs to demonstrate the game for purposes of video uh, rules explanations or multiplayer playthroughs or solo playthroughs. I would very much appreciate it if you would like this video and subscribe to my channel. Check out some of the other 70 games that I've played through and presented tutorials on over the years. The advantage of using my program is that you're going to be able to see everything close up. There won't be any distant shots. There won't be any zooming the camera around. And this will ensure that I do everything correctly, that I won't forget a step. The rules as they're outlined in the draft for the solo game indicates that you're playing a two-player game against a bot. It's possible that you can adapt the game to uh, play a solo against two bots or or even three bots if you're up for it and you know actually for kicks why don't we let's go with a three player game today uh and i'll explain some of the differences as i'm going along now the now the the rules don't actually talk about playing against two bots or three bots so there, uh, there's a few things that you have to adapt uh, in order to do that and, and make some decisions about. I will talk about all that uh, as we're going along. I'm going to be playing against Easy Solo Pirates today. I have not played this game very much, so uh, with that lack of experience, I'd like to give myself some sense of a fighting chance. So I'm going to be playing with easier bots, uh, easier settings, which I'll talk about uh, once I get into it. The amount of gold by default that triggers the burying of treasure by a bot is normally 12, but you could very easily increase or decrease that value in order to make the game easier or harder. So if I, I've increased those values to 15 for my two bots in, in this playthrough. That's enough of the preamble. Let's get underway. And let me start with a, a, a general introduction and an overview of how this game is played. If you are already familiar with the game and know the rules, you might want to skip ahead to the actual start of the playthrough. Uh, you won't need to listen to this first part. So the, the, the game is going to come with 16 map cards that are shuffled and laid out in this 4x4 grid, as you see here. Each map card represents a location where a particular ship or ships may, may be located at any one time. And there are icons on the cards that indicate what is special about that particular location. For instance, there are a number of cards like these that have these storm clouds and you would normally see lightning bolts and whatnot that represent, well, just like down, like down here, for example, that represents that there's a storm brewing in that area and there is uh, a disadvantage to you if you sail into that storm. Furthermore, there are other icons like an anchor symbol, which represents that that's a, there's a hidden cove on that at that location. 
There might be cross swords that indicate you can plunder at that location. There might be uh, a treasure chest which indicates that you can bury treasure there. There might be a hand symbol that indicates that you can trade a particular resource there. In this case, you can trade rum. In this case, you can trade gunpowder. Down here, you can, tra can trade coffee. So there are four resources in the game. There is coffee and rum, gunpowder, and also sugarcane. And at the start of the game, those four resources are randomly placed in the form of cubes on this market value card so that a certain price is associated with each resource. If you're trading coffee at the, currently, you're going to be getting two gold per unit of coffee, three gold for each unit of rum, four gold per gunpowder, five per sugarcane. And if and when a player does trade one of these resources, that falls to the bottom of the market value and all the other resources shift up and increase in, in their value. As you can see at the start of the game, each map card uh, has a search token on it that's been randomly distributed, all face down so that when you perform a search action at that location, you'll be revealing the search token and doing whatever it says. Each player has a map card with a rondelle on it. Your captain token starts at the top of the rondelle in what's called the zero space, and you move space by space in a clockwise motion around the rondelle. Now each player also has five order tokens that are randomly distributed into these different wedges of the rondelle. So if you look down here, you can see that, okay, my rondelle randomly has a crew up action in space one, a search action in space two, trade in space three, plunder in space four, and attack in space five. However those wedges are distributed, they're going to be locked into your rondelle and they won't change over the course of the game. As I said, your captain starts at the top of the rondelle. If you want to move clockwise around the rondelle, skipping one or more spaces, you have to put a, a deckhand on that order in order to skip over it. Deckhands are initially assigned to various sections down here at the bottom. In my case, I have a deckhand assigned a rigging that gives me one additional movement when I'm moving my ship. Uh, one deckhand associated to cannons, uh, which gives me one additional hit if and when I'm attacking or, or defending against an attack. And one deckhand assigned to extortion, which applies if and when your captain passes the ship line this line up here and basically starts again at the top of the rondelle. The action at the top is called the hideout space. You can take that action if you want, but you can also skip over it without having to block it using a deckhand. So a deckhand would never be placed in this space. And if you were here, you can treat this space as being the next space in order from, from space number five, or you can completely ignore it and go right to space number one. As you can see, there are two sets of arrows on the top here that indicate as such. If we look at the other bots, they're gonna have different layouts. So the yellow bot has search in space one, trade in space two, then plunder, then crew up, and then attack. And the gray player has plunder, search, trade, attack, and crew up in that order. Everything is pretty much the same. However, the bots have different sections at the bottom here. For example, Madam Drake, as you can see, has two rigging spaces, one on each side here, that provides one extra space of movement with a, with a cannon space in the middle. On the other hand, if I look at the yellow bot, there's two extort spaces on either side with a rigging action in between. So different bots are going to behave differently. There are also a set of bonus actions that a bot can take depending upon what their primary action is, be it trade, plunder, crew up, search, or attack. I'll talk more about those bonus actions later. There are also a set of dice here at the top 
that are used for calculating hits when attacking or defending. Each space on the rondelle, also for a bot captain, has a certain target assigned to it. So in the case of space one, Captain Annabelle here will be targeting the orange merchant ship. As you'll soon see, there's a mer there are two merchant ships that are neutral player characters that roam around the map in a certain de uh, defined order, an orange ship and a green ship. So in some cases, Annabelle targets orange, in some cases, uh, she targets the green ship. And in one case, or actually two cases, she's going to target me. Uh, in this case, when she rolls a five or a six, she'll be targeting me. So on the other hand, if I look at the, uh, if I look at the gray bot, space one and space four targets the orange merchant ship, space three and space five target the green merchant ship, and space two targets me, as well as uh, the six, in case the six is ever rolled. Now some of the harder solo captains will target the solo player more frequently. Uh, harder solo captains will have one space assigned to the orange merchant, one space assigned to the green merchant, and three spaces assigned to the human player. Uh, if you're playing a three-player game, I have decided it, in my little variant on a variant, if you will, that if, you're, if you are playing with one of those captains, then uh, two of the gray icons will refer to you, but the third gray icon will, will refer to the other bot if you're playing against two bots. And if you're playing against three bots then, and, they're, and you're playing against a, a bot that has a solo captain with three gray icons on it, then one of those will apply to you and each of the other two will apply to one of the other bots. So that, as you can see, takes some of the load off of you when you're playing multiplayer uh, as the bot is not always targeting you as often as it otherwise would be. However, you can decide to to play that any way you want. Every human in the game always has the same helm card. As you can see, it's pretty generic and always has a rigging space, a cannon space, and an extort space. They're all, uh, every card also has a, a repair space in the bottom right corner where deckhands go in the event that that deckhand can no longer be used for one reason or another. Each player also has a legend card assigned a uh, legend track that they'll move up as they uh, gain more experience. So every player starts out, every human player at least, starts out as a sea dog, but can move, advance to become a pirate, a corsair, a swashbuckler, a buccaneer, or a dreaded pirate. And certain bonuses and certain gains in movement and number of dice rolled change as you advance up on this track. Each player starts with three treasures. The first player to bury three treasures in a solo game wins outright, but I've adapted the rules so that if you're playing a three-player or four-player solo game, the game will end at the end of the round, so every player will have taken the same number of turns. But if you are playing a two-player version of the solo game, the rules currently state that the game ends outright as soon as one player uh, buries their third treasure. As you can see, the solo bots do have combination captain helm card. They don't have a separate captain card like the human player does. Their helm card serves as their captain and it's customized and behaves differently depending upon there's Annabelle and Madame Drake and I think there's one called Henry Kidd and another one called Captain Jack, maybe I don't remember offhand, but there are uh, there are about five or six, depending upon which version of Tiny Epic Pirates you ordered, five or six different solo captains that are come that are going to come in the game. For solo play, there is also a particular legend card that's used. There are different legend cards that have different types of. Uh, special abilities on them when the solo player rolls a six. This one's called Fearless. Again, it's one of the easier legend cards. In, in my case, the gray player is playing with uh, the Notorious legend card, which has different abilities. 
All of this will become clear as I'm going through the playthrough. There are a set of uh, crewmen that you can hire for your ship up here when you perform the crew up action. Each player can have up to four crewmen that are hired and assist the captain. In my case, my captain is currently Captain Magnus Bolt. As you already saw, I'm playing against Captain Annabelle and Captain Madame Drake. We're at the tail end of setup here where my program is asked to be where I want to position the orange merchant ship. The orange and green merchant ships, those non-player characters, start in opposite corners of the board. I'm going to put the orange ship up here in the top left. Therefore, the green ship is in the opposite corner, and each ship is on a route that heads, that heads for the diagonally opposite port. Currently, I have to now indicate a space for the Navy ship. The Navy ship is the policeman in the game. Uh, goes about chasing after pirates and attacking them in one form or another. Uh, the Navy ship has to be uh, initially positioned in one of the corners that doesn't contain a merchant ship. So I'm going to stick my Navy ship up here in the top right. Now I have to choose a starting map card with a cove on it. And as you can see, my program has highlighted where those are. So it looks like uh, it's very cove heavy here on the eastern side of the map. Uh, but there is a cove over here to the left. So I'm going to choose the cove farthest away from the Navy ship and farthest away from the other coves. The bots are going to position themselves as far as possible away from the Navy ship as well. So the next player in turn order, the yellow bot, is probably going to go here, and the gray bot is going to position themselves in this map space. So I'm going to select this cove. And as you can see, yellow is already placed here, and gray is already placed here. Uh, I randomly was dealt a captain card. I can decide to start with either side of it. I could choose the Captain Magnus Bolt side, or in my case, the Captain Vera Locke side. As you can see, Vera Locke has a 4, 5, and a 6, and Captain Magnus Bolt has a 1, 2, or a 3 for his dice. Opposite sides of a captain's card are always going to be one, two, three on one side, four, five, six on the other. Uh, I'm going to look at these crew people up here. So I've got one with two threes, a, one with a two and a six, one with a one and a six. I think in that case, I am going to stick with my one, two, three captain, Captain Magnus Bolt. So I'll stick with him. He's got a bonus, a set of bonus actions that trigger when I perform a search action. I'll talk more about bonus actions later on, but I'm going to continue. And now we're ready to start the game. The human player always goes first. And uh, in my case, the yellow bot will go second and the gray bot will go third. So uh, as I said, I can move my captain token one space clockwise for free or assign deckhands from these sections to different orders if I wanted to block a space. I'm okay with starting with a crew up option. So I'm just going to go right to crew up, move my captain token to that space, and now I can first sail my ship and then I'll execute the order. So when sailing, I have to determine how far I can sail. Well, at sea dog level, my base distance or base movement is one space, as shown here on the legend card. But because I have a deckhand that's also assigned to rigging, I get an additional movement. So I have two spaces that I can move. So I, I want to keep some distance from the Navy ship and the two bots to inhibit their ability to possibly attack me, at least for the moment. So I'm going to use my two spaces, and, and movement is all, always orthogonal in this game, never diagonal. I'm going to move this way and then up here, and that's the end of my two movement. So uh, my ship is now currently sharing the same map location as the orange merchant ship. Now I'm going to perform my crew up action by choosing one of these crewmen. If I wanted to, I could spend one gold to discard all these cards to the bottom of the deck and draw three new crew. Uh, you can only do that once per turn. I start the game with one gold. Each bot starts the game with zero gold. 
And remember, each bot will be in a position to bury their treasure once they accumulate 15 gold. In my case, I will be able to bury treasure as soon as I reach a minimum of 12 gold. I can't have more than 13 gold in my possession at any one time. I max out at 13. And as you can see, there are some spaces where I can uh, spend 13 gold to bury a treasure. There are a few where I can spend uh, 12 gold to bury a treasure. So it's a little easier to bury in those spaces. Uh, let me see who I like here. So Lisa Legacy gives me two more threes. And she says that when I trade, I can uh, optionally trade a sugar cane and a gunpowder in exchange for seven gold, regardless of what their prices in the market happen to be. Then there's uh, Sydney Sweetwater. Uh, when I plunder, I can exchange a, a booty or a resource cube that's on my ship for any one random, any other one randomly drawn from the bag. And Ursula Bain has a one and a six at the top, and she says that if I, when I attack, I can perform a bonus action of sailing my ship. I think I'm going to go with Lisa Legacy. I like the two threes. I think those complement my one, two, three uh, on Captain Bolt well. So I'm going to go with Lisa Legacy. And every time you perform a crew up action, you have the option one time during the game to, to declare a mutiny and flip over your captain to the other side. So at some point, if I feel that Magnus Bolt isn't working out for me, I can flip that captain and use Captain Vera Locke with a four, five, and six, but only when you're performing a crew up action and you decide to declare a mutiny. If I had a crewman that had a trigger action as crew up, then I might be able to perform other bonus actions at this point, but I don't. As you can see, the captain always triggers on a search action, and, this, and Lisa Legacy basically has a special ability associated with a trade action. So my, my turn is virtually over, and I'm now going to uh, end my turn and turn it over to the yellow player, and I'll explain how the bot works. So the bot rolls a die. I'm going to pause it now. So uh, the yellow bot rolled a four, which means that it wants to, if possible, move its captain to its fourth space, in this case, crew up. In order to do that, it's got to move as many deckhands as possible to block the intervening spaces. If it runs out of deckhands, then it simply, instead of performing the number four order, it's going to perform wherever the captain ends up. Uh, if you do run out of deckhands. But in this case, yellow does have three deckhands. So a, when a bot is assigning deckhands to an order space, it uh, assigns them right to left, starting with uh, any deckhand that might be in the repair space, followed by any deckhand that's in the next space from the right and the next space in the next space. So in this case, the uh, yellow bot is going to move this deckhand to the search option, this deckhand to the trade option, this deckhand to the plunder option, so that the, the captain can move to space number four. Space number four targets the green merchant ship, so that tells Captain Annabelle that in this, during this turn, she should use her movement to sail toward the green merchant ship wherever it might be. And because she's performing a crew up action, once she's finished with that, she is going to have a bonus action up here that indicates that she'll gain one gold. When she crews up, she does not take she does not change the display of crew cards. Instead she draws one randomly from the top of the deck and assigns that as her crew. If and when she ever reaches the limit of four crewmen, if she uh, performs another crew up action, instead of drawing from the top of the deck, she will recycle the three crew cards on display at that time. 
Okay, so we know what the yellow bot's going to do. The deckhands are going to get assigned. The captain token's going to move to space four. And then, the, uh, and then Captain Annabelle is going to sail toward the green merchant ship, which is immediately south of her, one space away. So when she sails, she sails toward the target, always prioritizing vertical movement before horizontal movement, if there's a choice. But in this case, she's only going to sail one space south to the green merchant ship. Then she's going to crew up by drawing a crewman from the top of the deck, whatever it may be. And then she's going to gain one gold for her bonus, and that will be the end of her turn. So let's let it go. The deckhands are assigned. She moves the captain. She sails south. She draws a deckhand. She has gained a gold. So now instead of zero gold, she has one gold. Okay, we'll move on to the gray bot now. So gray also rolled a four. He's going to do, or she, Madam Drake, is going to do the same thing. Assign the deckhands right to left to the first three spaces. And in this case, move the gray captain token to the fourth space. She's going to perform an attack action targeting the orange, orange merchant ship. In this case, Gray's uh, base movement for the Notorious Legend is one movement. If there was a deckhand assigned here or here, there would be additional points of movement, but those deckhands are going to be missing. They're going to be moved to the uh, rondelle. So the Gray player is only going to get one space of movement targeting the orange uh, merchant ship. If you look at its bonus for attack, its bonus is two bonus hits, but because Madame uh, Drake is not going to be attacking anything, she's not. She basically, her turn is going to be pretty much a dud. Her turn is over. She didn't really accomplish anything. No player can ever attack the Navy ship in this game. Uh, Navy ship only attacks players and always wins all attacks. So you want to try to steer clear of the Navy ship if at all possible. So it is now round two and it's my turn again. And I guess I'm okay with performing a search action. So again, I'm not going to assign any deckhands. I'm simply going to move my captain to the next order space and perform a, uh, a search action. Uh, I'm up here in the top left and I don't have any particular reason to move, so I'm just going to stay there and I'll reveal this token and, and do whatever it says. So I got, oh, three gold. That's the best search token available. Um, so I just gained three gold just for performing a search action there. That was a good stroke of the luck. Because I performed a search action, I can perform bonus actions associated with my captain who has the search action as a trigger. So the first action I could perform is to bury treasure. I don't have 12 gold, the minimum amount I have to have in order to bury a treasure, so I can't do that. But then I can perform a bonus action of an attack. And since I happen to be sharing a space with the orange merchant ship, I can target it and attack it if I want to. By the way, as you can see, each merchant ship carries one cube randomly drawn from the bag, we, uh, all the player ships, get one cube drawn from the bag as well. Player ships can carry as many as three cargo, three cubes. Merchant ships always only carry one. So if I'm going to attack the orange merchant, I have to look over here and see that the current merchant card assigned to the orange ship indicates that the merchant ship is just going to have two hits. And if I sink it, I'm going to get two gold. So I have to get, I'm going to have to, I'm going to be rolling a number of dice and have to get at least two hits to tie, three hits at least to sink the ship. That means I need to roll pretty low. I got, remember I have a one, two, three and a three, three. But if I do roll low, uh, I think I'll do all right. Uh, I'd also get a bonus hit from my deck hand assigned to cannons. So I think my chances are pretty good here, unless I roll high. I'm going to go ahead and try to attack the orange merchant ship. So I'm going to roll my dice. Ah, I got a two and a one. That's great. So that's equivalent to three hits. 
The orange merchant ship has two hits based on its merchant card, so I will sink it. Therefore, I will confiscate its cargo. Its coffee will come over. Its coffee will come over into my cargo, and now I'll, I'll have two coffee. Unfortunately, coffee's priced at two gold, which is at the bottom of the market value track. And then the Navy ship is going to get reset to the port space furthest away from the attack. In that case, it's going to go down here and join the green merchant ship in the bottom right corner. It'll draw a new uh, cube from the bag, so it'll have a new resource assigned to it, and uh, that'll be that. Okay, I'm going to uh, unpause. So I confiscate the coffee cube. I gain two gold, so my gold's up to six now. And the orange merchant ship is reset to the opposite port, and it looks like she's is now carrying a sugar cane. That ends my turn. I performed all my, my primary action. I performed all the bonus actions I could possibly perform. We're going to turn it over to the yellow bot now and see what it's going to do. The yellow, the bot players never stop in the anchor space. They always skip the hideout. They never perform a hideout action. So uh, if and when they pass the ship line, they're going to immediately proceed to space number one over here. Okay, the yellow bot rolled a one, so she's simply going to move her captain to the next space in a clockwise motion, and she's going to try to perform an attack action. That is targeting me, so she is going to head for me. She's going to sail toward me. Fortunately, I'm way over here in the other corner, so she has no chance of reaching me. Her base speed is two. She doesn't have any deckhands assigned down here, so she's going to move two spaces toward me, prioritizing vertical movement. But because she doesn't reach me, she doesn't perform her attack action, and there's nothing up here in the bonus spot assigned to attack that's of any real value. So just like the gray player in, in the gray's last turn, this is going to be pretty much of a wasted turn for the bot. Fortunately, fortunate for me. So she moves two spaces north. Actually, three spaces. Oh, right, because her attack action gives her one additional movement space. So she has two movement here from her solo legend card and then one additional movement uh, that's uh, as a result of the attack action for a total of three spaces. She moved toward me three spaces, didn't reach me, so she didn't attack me. And her turn is now over. Moving on to the gray bot. This time the bot is uh, on, the f on space four and wants to try to get back to space four. You cannot take the same action two turns in a row. She can't reach space four, so she'll just move to the next space. She doesn't have any deckhands that she can reassign to block because all the deckhands are already assigned to other orders. These will free up as she moves around the, the rondelle further, but in the meantime, she's going to have to just stop at crew up, and which she's going to perform a crew up action just like the yellow bot did earlier. Uh, her bonus action when she crews up is that she causes me to lose one gold. If you look up here, the gray player ship loses one gold, so that's uh, what's going to happen to me as a result of her bonus action. That's the crew card that she got, randomly drawn, and now it's my turn. And as you can see, I used to have six gold, but now I have five. So now I have two coffee on board. Where is coffee trading? There's one over here, and there's one over here, which I can reach because I have two points of movement. Uh, one base point of movement plus one because I have a deckhand assigned to rigging. So I'm going to go ahead and trade coffee. So I'm going to choose the trade action, move my captain token there. I have to have my ship in a location where I can trade coffee. So I have to use my two points of movement to sail south. And then I'll sell my two coffee for two gold each and gain four gold. So now I'm up to nine gold.
Moving on to the yellow bot. Okay, roll to five is going to move to this space, jump over it because the deckhand is assigned. But when you move past or land on another deckhand, that deckhand gets reassigned down below. The bot reassigns deckhands in left to right order. So they're assigned to order spaces right to left, but they're reassigned from the move when moved from the rondelle uh, left to right. So now these deckhands are going to fall off the rondelle and get assigned one deckhand to each space. Bots always assign one deckhand to every space, but the human player can assign multiple deckhands to a particular function if and when they want to, when they have that ability. So the captain here is going to skip over this space, the deckhand will move to extort, skip over this space, the deckhand will move to rigging, skip over this space, the deckhand will move down here to extort, and then we'll run out of, of of spaces that she can skip she'll, she'll she'll stop here she'll target the green ship she'll move toward it with three movement spaces three movement points two points of base movement a deck hand will be assigned to rigging at that point so she'll have a third point of movement she's up here so she's going to move three spaces south toward the green merchant ship which she targets as a result of space four then she'll draw the top crew card and Again, she'll gain one gold. Because she crossed the ship line, she'll gain one gold for every crewman assigned to extort. She'll have two crewmen assigned to extort at that point, she'll, so she'll gain two gold. And then the orange and green merchant ships will be moved one space, and the navy ship will be moved targeting the yellow bot. All of that will be done by the player who were right or the previous player in turn order who was me. So I'll decide how those ships move and which direction. But they do have to be, uh, they do have to move toward their destinations. Okay. She gets, she moves all the deckhands. She moves to the crew up space. She sails three spaces south toward green. She draws another crew card. She gains a gold and then two additional gold for the ship line. And now I have to move the orange merchant ship toward its destination. More orange merchant ship is down here in the southeast. I can either move it west one space or north one space. I'll move it to the west. I'll move the green merchant ship to the north, kind of keep them separate. And now the Navy ship has to move two spaces toward the yellow, the current active player, which is yellow. So the only direction that the Navy ship is going to go in this case is south. Two points of movement because three treasures uh, have yet to be buried. She has not buried any treasures yet. The number of spaces the Navy ship can move is equal to two plus the number of treasures that that player has buried so far. So she hasn't buried any, so the Navy ship is going to move two bases toward her, but will not reach her and therefore will not attack her. So Navy ship moves there and then there, and now the turn is over. And Annabelle is up to four gold. Now moving on to the gray bot. So the gray player rolled a three and is going to end up on the trade space. All the deckhands will get moved off the track and get reassigned left to right. One to rigging, one to cannons, the third deckhand to rigging. Next, the gray ship will sail one space toward its target, which will be the green merchant ship. Then it'll perform a trade action, selling its gunpowder. Bots can trade in any location and can plunder in any location, unlike the human player who can only trade at certain trading spaces and can only plunder at certain plunder spaces. Because the bot player will have crossed the ship line, she won't be gaining any gold because she doesn't have any actions assigned to extort, but the yellow bot, the player previous to her, will then move the orange and green merchant ships toward their destination, one space, and then will target the gray player with the navy ship. Gray ship is going to be attacked by the navy ship, 
when the Navy ship attacks, it always wins the attack, so all of the deckhands are going to get reassigned to repair, which effectively limits the deckhands that provide bonuses down here on the bottom. Okay, moves to the trading space, moves one space south, trade, trades its gunpowder for four gold. Its bonus action for trading is a search action, so she reveals this token. It provides one surefire token. I haven't talked about surefire tokens, but the bot players don't make use of those, so they gain one gold instead. Then the Navy ship will successfully attack the gray ship. All of its deckhands will get reassigned to the repair slot. The gray player moves to the nearest unoccupied cove. It basically retreats. Now the rules aren't clear as to whether or not it can retreat to the space it's on or retreats to a different space with a cove. Currently the gray bot is on this cove. I've made the assumption that it always retreats and gets off the space. So my coding is going to have it move to the nearest cove away from this space, which is going to be this cove up here. So it's going to be hiding out here away from the Navy ship. That's where it's going to end up. Navy ship attacks. It moves up into this cove. But it did end up with five gold, four gold for successfully uh, trading its gunpowder and one gold because it performed that search action. Now it's back to me. Round four. My next action on my rondelle is plunder. I might as well do that and show you how that works. Some of the plunder spaces provide you with one cube, but the plunder spaces are, that share a space with a storm always provide two cubes. But if you sail into a space with a storm, you have to jostle one of your deckhands and assign them to the repair slot. So if I want to get two cubes, and this is a little risky for me because I am moving closer to my opponents here, uh, so I, I'm hoping they're not going to attack me, but uh, I'd rather get two cubes as opposed to one. So I'm going to go ahead and sail in. I'm going to go ahead and select plunder. I'm going to sail one space into the storm. Because I entered a storm, I have to jostle one of my deckhands. Uh, I will assign the deckhand currently assigned to its stored and move that deckhand to repair since I'm not crossing the ship line, certainly not in this particular turn. So that deckhand gets moved into repair to represent the fact that I was jostled. I'm going to end my movement and now draw two cubes at random. So I got a brown coffee and a beige sugar cane. And that's essentially all I can do at this point. Unfortunately, I didn't get a sugar cane and a gunpowder, in which case I would have been able to take advantage at some point of Lisa Legacy's ability. I'm going to end my turn and turn it over to the yellow bot. Yellow bot rolls a six. When you roll a six, the bot moves to the next space on its rondelle, but ignores the action on the space. It then moves its legend marker one space in a clockwise motion around its legend card and will perform whatever actions are indicated in the next space on the legend card. So her legend marker is going to move in here and she's going to perform a crew up action. She doesn't get any bonus actions as a result. She only does what it says in the space. So she's going to perform a crew up and get her third crew member, but that will end her turn. She moves here, she sails targeting me, and then performs a crew up action. Remember when the bot rolls a six, they always target the human player. Uh, fortunately, they weren't set to attack. She was simply going to crew up. So uh, she did reach me, but she didn't attack me. So I got, got a little lucky there. Moving on to the gray bot. Oh, the gray also rolls a six. 
I'm going to move the captain to the next space, ignore the action, and simply move its legend marker one space clockwise, which happens to be attack. She's going to attack, she's going to target me. She's going to have one point of base movement plus one point of bonus movement from the space. And no deck hands are assigned to rigging, so she'll move two space spaces toward me. She's not going to be able to reach me. She's going to move vertically one space, then vertic one space to the west. Won't be able to reach me, so therefore her attack is going to fail. And her turn ends. So even though I moved east into this storm, I got lucky. And although I was targeted by both yellow and gray, neither one of them actually attacked me. Okay, my turn again, round five. Well, let's attack. So I'm moving to the next space on my rondelle. I can attack a merchant ship. I can attack a player ship. Well, if I attack a merchant ship, I'm going to, just as before, I'm going to confiscate its resource cube. And reset it if I'm able to sink it. Currently, both orange and green still have the two hit cards, so I have to deal at least two hits in order to tie or sink it. If I went after yellow, yellow has a lot of dice, so I don't think it's in my best interest to try to attack yellow. Gray, on the other hand, only has one crewman so far. A 1, 3, 5, and two twos. No deck hands assigned to cannons, so I think I have a pretty good chance of attacking Gray. If I succeed and sink it, it's going to jostle all of its crew. Well, all of its crew are already jostled from its last attack. It will again retreat to the nearest cove. And then I will advance on my legend track for sinking one of my opponents. So I will move up one space on my legend track and become a pirate and gain two gold and gain an additional point of movement for future turns. So I am going to go ahead and sail one space east. Uh, it is a storm. I'm jostled. So I will, I'm not going to sail anymore. So I'll assign my deckhand and rigging to the repair space. And now I can target either the orange ship or the gray bot ship. I'm going to attack the gray bot ship. I'm going to be rolling two dice. Great, I rolled low. I got a one and a two, equivalent to one, two, three hits. Okay, now it all depends upon how the gray bot rolls. She rolled a two and a six. She got two hits, but nothing else. So I sink her three to two. So I won the battle. She'll retreat to the nearest cove, which is over here. I will advance on my legend track and gain two gold. I'm up to 11 now. And the gray ship is over here in this cove, hiding out in shame. Moving on to the yellow bot. Roll the two. Wants to move here. We'll take this deck hand, block this space. It'll then move over here and perform a trade. It will be targeting the green ship. Uh, so yellow is here and the green ship is over here. And it's going to have four points of movement, two base movement plus deck hand, no, I'm sorry, three points of movement, two base movement plus one point uh, because of the deck hand assigned to rigging, and then we'll perform her trade action, selling her rum for four gold, bringing her up to eight. Crossing the ship line in the process, She has one deck hand assigned to extort, so she gained an additional gold. And now it's up to me to move the orange merchant ship and the green merchant ship toward its destination. 
I'll move the orange ship up here. I'll move the green ship here. The Navy ship targets yellow, so it moves one space north and defeats yellow, who will jostle all of its deckhands and then retreat to the nearest cove. So it moved up here. Moving on to the gray bot. Roll to one. This space is going to get blocked by a deckhand, moved up from repair. Then the captain will cross the ship line and move to the plunder action. It will move one point of movement toward the orange merchant ship. So it's going to, uh, this is uh, Madam Drake, the gray player now. So its gray ship is going to move north, but stop there because it only has one point of movement. It will then draw a cube from the bag for its plundering action. And then its bonus action is to search. So it will reveal this token and we'll see what it gets. Got a, it got a coffee. It can't, you, this is a ignore one storm space, which uh, bots always ignore storm spaces. So the bot's simply going to gain one gold as a result of this search. Doesn't have any deckhands assigned to extort. In fact, doesn't have any extort actions at all. So its gold is now up to six. Now the uh, yellow bot is moving the merchant ships toward their destination. And, is, and the navy ship is already occupying the space where gray is. So gray is once again going to get it jo completely jostled and will move to the nearest cove. So it moved down here. It couldn't move here because the yellow ship is hiding out in that cove. So all the ships are getting targeted by the Navy at this point. No one's buried any treasure yet, so the Navy still is limited to two points of movement. Round six, back to me. So I have a bunch of different options here. I have all my deckhands available. But I think what I'll demonstrate now is the hideout action. So I will be crossing the ship line, and I'm going to be able to hide out, which means I can move to a cove. And even though the Navy ship is going to uh, target me because I've crossed the ship line, I'm going to be hidden, so the Navy ship is not going to be able to attack me. Because I'm hiding out, I'll also be able to reassign all my deckhands any which way I want. And uh, I'm going to assign them all to extort so I can make the most money possible. Actually, no, I'm at 11 gold, so there's no point in assigning all my deckhands because I only need two more. One, I only need one more gold, but two more gold will allow me to uh, bury treasure in any space. So I think I'll take, I'll assign two deckhands to to extort. And I'll probably assign the other deckhand either to rigging or cannons. Maybe rigging. Um, well, anyhow, let me select the hideout action. I have two points of movement. I have to move to a, a cove that's unoccupied. That would be this one over here. Actually, I could have moved to this cove over here. But this one's a little further away, so... I'll stick with that. I can now, because I'm hiding out, I can now reassign all of my deckhands. So I am going to assign two deckhands to extort. So I'll be able to get, come on, behave. So I'll be able to get two gold for crossing the ship line at the end of my turn. I'll, I am going to move this one over to rigging. Uh, since I'm hiding out, no one's going to be attacking me. Well, the Navy ship certainly won't be attacking me. But my cannons are useless against the Navy ship. Um, I'm three spaces away from yellow, three spaces away from gray. I think I'm okay. I'm going to stick with the deckhand in rigging and not in cannons. Okay. Uh, because I crossed the ship line, I'm going to gain two gold. 
and the gray bot is going to move the merchant ships and the navy ship toward me but again the navy ship will not attack me because i'm hidden in a cove okay so now here's the navy ship doesn't see me because i'm hiding out over here the green and orange merchant ships are one space away from their destinations I'll in my turn turn it over to yellow. Yellow has a roll of four and is going to try to perform a crew up again, targeting the green merchant ship. That's going to be her third crewman. Her fourth crewman, sorry. That'll be her fourth crewman. So after this, if she ever performs a crew, a crew up action again, she won't draw another crewman. Instead, she'll simply recycle all the cards in the display. Moving on to the gray bot. Roll to two. It's going to move to the next space and perform a search action, targeting me with only one point of movement. It's here. I'm here. It's going to move one space. There's nothing to search for there, so it's going to fail. Its bonus action is to have, oh, actually two additional points of movement when it performs a search. So it's going to move three spaces toward me. One, two, three. It's not attacking, however. It's performing a search action. It'll reveal this search token and gain whatever it says. We'll see what it gets. Okay, it got a free booty from the bag. It drew a rum. Anytime a bot ship takes it, gets its third cube, it automatically performs a trade action. And it trades all of the best resources it has. So in this case, if it gained another uh, rum, for example, rum's trading at two, Coffee is trading at four, so it would sell its one coffee for four. If, on the other hand, it drew another coffee cube, it would sell both of its coffee automatically for four each. That always triggers any time a bot ship takes on its third cargo cube. Okay, moving back to me, round seven. Well, I'm okay with getting another crewman, so I'm going to go ahead and crew up. I can move my ship up to three spaces, and I would like to get away from everybody to the extent I can. So I'll move this way, and then I'll move south and south again. This is pretty far, well, probably about as far away as I can get. And for my crew card... between Sydney Sweetwater and Ursula Bain. Two and a six versus a one and a six. And she lets me sail whenever I attack. She just lets me exchange a cube whenever I plunder. Um, I'm going to take Urs Ursula Bain. I'm not going to mutiny. Moving on to yellow. Roll to five. It is going to perform an attack targeting me. It's going to move, uh, has two points of movement. It has one bonus point of movement when it attacks. Oh, I think it's going to reach me. No, it's not. It's going to move three spaces. One, two, three. It is not going to be able to reach me, so it won't be able to attack. Okay, moving on to gray. Rolls of one. All the deckhands are going to block these spaces. It's going to successfully cross the ship line and move to its plunder action, targeting the orange ship. One point of movement. It's here. Uh, orange is up here, so it's going to move one space north, then perform a plunder. It's going to gain one cube. It already has two. 
So its third cube is going to trigger a trade of its best resource. Then its bonus action for plundering is a search. So it's going to reveal this search token and it'll get whatever it gets. Okay, moving one space north. Okay, it looks like it got another rum. And coffee is its best resource, so it's going to sell off its coffee for four and go up to ten. And then we're going to see what it gets as a result of the search token. Gets a free booty, which is going to trigger another sale. It grabs a coffee. Coffee is now cheap at two. Rum is at three. It's going to set, it's going to now trade off both of its rum for three gold each, gaining six gold. That'll trigger a treasure, bear a bury treasure action. It automatically buries treasure in the nearest space. So gray gets to bury its first treasure. And it buried it right there. That was the nearest treasure space. Uh, the yellow moved the Navy ship, and the Navy ship attacked Gray, and therefore Gray is now hiding out in this cove again. But that was a great turn for Gray. It is the first player to get on the board. And because it uh, has buried one treasure, it now has two points of movement and one additional hit when it attacks. And whenever the Navy ship targets it, it will be moving three spaces toward it instead of two. In the meantime, it's my turn at the top of round eight. So I'm ready to bury as well. And I bury treasure by performing a search action. So I'll move my captain to search. And then I'll decide where I'm going to move my uh, ship. I have three points of movement. Uh, two base points plus one extra for the, for the deckhand assigned to rigging. So I want to move to a space where I can search and bury treasure. Um, and I'll also have the bonus ability to attack because of my captain's bonus ability. So, uh, ideally the best place for me is to go up here where I'll be able to bury treasure, where I'll be, I won't be able to search because there's no search token up here, but I will be able to perform an attack and I'll get my treasure buried for, for 13 gold. So I'm going to move north. 13 gold here. So now I'm on the board. And if I want, I'll, I can attack one of these ships. They're both at two hits and two gold. So I think my chances are good. I'll go ahead and target green. Ah. Okay, a four and a five are zero hits. I'm going to fail at this attack. That means I'm going to have to jostle one of my crew, my deckhands, moving it into repair. But I will gain a surefire token uh, because I have failed an attack. That's your consolation prize. So who do I want to jostle here? Well, I'm not currently close to uh, crossing the ship line, so I'll move a deckhand from Exert. A Surefire token, again, I'll talk about what they do for you when I perform my next attack or get attacked. Uh, I'll hold off describing what Surefire tokens do until then. Moving on to Yellow. Yellow rolls a 1. It's going to cross the ship line and perform a search, targeting the orange ship with uh, two points of movement. It's down here, so it's going to move two points, two spaces north. It will not be able to search because there's no search token there. 
its bonus action is to perform a trade. It w doesn't have any cargo, so it's not going to trade. So this is going to be pretty much a dud turn for yellow. Uh, it won't even get any extortion gold. So now it's up to me to move the orange merchant ship. I'll go ahead and move it south. I'll move the green ship east. The Navy ship, uh, where are you, Navy ship? Up here, comes south to yellow, attacks it, yellow retreats to the nearest cove, jostling all of its deckhands. That was a, a poor turnout for yellow, and it has not yet buried any treasure, though it is four gold away from burying a treasure. Gray. Rolls a three will uh, block a space with the deckhand and perform a trade targeting the green ship and it is currently carrying coffee so it's going to sell that coffee for three okay back to me well i didn't have a very good attack last time my next action is trade, and I have a coffee and a sugar cane. I could make uh, five gold by trading that sugar cane, but if I can successfully attack one of the bots, I can advance in my legend and gain another worker and move up to three points of movement. I think in the long run that's better. And gray, I think, is still pretty weak, isn't it? Yeah, gray only has one crewman. So I think I'm going to take a chance and I'm going to move this deckhand up and block that space. And I don't need the movement, so I'll move this deckhand from rigging up to this space and I'll move my captain to attack. I'll move one space east. I'll stop there and hope I roll low. I want to attack Ray. Well, I got a one and I have a surefire token. So, finally, what do these surefire tokens do? Well, if you want, you can use a surefire token to set any one of your dice to any value that you want. So I'm pretty much guaranteed of defeating Gray. Let's go ahead and spend the surefire token. I might as well, I, I, don't, I probably don't need to, but I'm going to demonstrate it nevertheless. So my program is automatically going to reset my worst die to the best possible value, which in my case would be a three. So it's going to reset this six to a three. And that'll give me a more, a more than enough hits. Five hits. Bray got a two and a six. Yeah, that's only one. Uh, two hits, two and a six. Its dice are one, three, five. The two is good for two hits. Yeah, I didn't need to spend the surefire token, but uh, whatever. That's fine. So I'm going to get my additional crewman and my deckhand, and I think I can assign it to any space I want. I'll probably assign it to cannons, just in case somebody wants revenge and decides to target me. So I'm going to assign it to cannons, but now I have four deckhands. That gives me a little more flexibility. Gray retreats to the nearest cove. And now it's Yellow's turn. Oh, bonus actions. Oh, great. That's right. Because I attacked, I can sail at my current speed, which is uh, two points, uh, three points of movement at Corsair level. So if I wanted to move, where would I move? Well, where's Yellow? Yellow's over here. I think I will use the bonus, but I'll only move one space west 
and just stop over here. At least I'm four spaces away from yellow, so I'm out of reach in case yellow decides to attack me. Moving on to yellow. Roll to two. It is going to trade, targeting the green ship. And yellow, uh, where are you? Yellow, you're hiding out somewhere, aren't you? Oh, you're over here. And you don't have any cargo. So you're going to move toward the green ship. And um, you're not going to trade because you don't have any cargo to trade. Your bonus action for trade is to gain a gold. So at least you'll get that. Up to 12, three gold away from burying treasure. Gray rolls a two, is going to perform a, well, block, 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 cross the ship line, perform a search action, targeting, the, targeting me with two points of movement. It's going to reach me. But it will perform a search action and fail because there's nothing to search for there. Its bonus is two extra points of movement, which it doesn't need. So this is going to be pretty much of a dead turn for Gray. Yellow moves the merchant ships and attacks Gray with the Navy ship. Gray's going to retreat to the nearest cove, jostling all of its workers. It's my turn. Round 10. Well, I'm at zero gold. I can't get far enough away from the Navy ship, so it's going to, it's going to target me. So I'm tempted to hide out, I think. And I have enough movement. I have three spaces of movement, so I can't go here, but I could reach this space over here and just hide out. I think that's what I'll do, and I'm going to do what I did before and move all my deckhands to extort to get the most gold possible. So I am choosing hideout. Again, that ding represents the fact that I am across the ship line. I'm moving east, east into the storm. I have to assign a deckhand to repair. doesn't matter since I'm about to hide out over here. Now I can reassign all my deckhands. And I'm going to assign them all to extort. So I'll get the most gold possible for crossing the ship line. Then the, uh, gray, then the gray bot will move the green and orange ships and the target me with the Navy ship, but I'm hiding out so the Navy ship won't attack. Moving on to yellow. Four, it's going to perform a crew up action and its bonus is to gain one gold. Just recycles the cards in the display because it's already got its maximum number of crewmen. Moving on to gray now. Gray rolls a two. It is going to block, 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 cross the ship line and perform a plunder action targeting the orange ship. Gray has no cargo, so it's just simply going to gain a cube sailing toward the orange ship. Gains one cube, but performs a bonus action. Gains two more gold for the search. And yellow takes care of moving the Navy ship and the merchant ships. And now it's going to be my turn. And I think I will move to crew up and get another deckhand. Let me first see who's up here. So Taylor True North, one and a four, wouldn't be bad. It would give me three ones, and I don't have a die for four. 
Jolly Raj, a one and a two, would be very nice as well. His bonus is to trade when I search. Her bonus is to sail when I search, which I already, uh, you know, I already, I don't know if I need that as much. Uh, Alice and Malice, not so much. Although double fives aren't, t aren't bad. I think I'm going to go with Jolly Raj, who will allow me to trade when I search. So I'm going to move to the crew up space. Uh, do I want to sail? Yellow is here. I'm up here. There's really no place for me to run, so I'm just going to stay put and take Jolly Raj. Not mutiny. Yellow's turn. Yellow is going to perform a block, block, block across the ship line and perform a plunder action. It does not have any cargo, so this will be one cargo cube for it. And it's going to steal one. It's going to, I'm going to lose one gold in the process. Has no deck hands on extort, so it's not going to gain any additional gold. Cross the ship line, so I have to move the ships. And they're both headed uh, east, so I'll move both ships into this space. And now the Navy ship targets yellow, so it's going to move west. It will jostle all of its deckhands, and then she will retreat into the nearest cove, which is up here. Okay, Gray's turn. Gray rolls a six, moves its captain to the next space, it targets me, moves its legend marker down here, and it looks like I'm going to lose a booty. Now, it doesn't say whether I can choose which booty to lose or if I lose one at random. And what am I currently carrying? Where am I here? I have a coffee and a sugar cane. And I think I, pro I programmed my game to uh, randomly go ahead and just pick a cube at random. So hopefully I'll lose the coffee and not the sugar cane. I did lose the coffee, and uh, I do have one sugar cane, which I could potentially trade at five unless someone trades before me. Okay, my turn. Should I go ahead and just trade? That probably, make, again, makes the most sense, I think, unless I want to do what I did last time and attack the gray ship again. Alternatively, I could perform a search and then perform a trade thanks to Jolly Roger. So maybe that makes the most that makes the most uh, sense. So where can I trade sugarcane? Oh, I'm on the space where I can trade sugarcane. So I am going to go ahead and perform a search action. I will see what this token is. I'm not going to move, and then I'll trade my sugar cane at this port and gain five gold. Okay, search. No movement. I got free two spaces of movement at some point. I will now sell my sugar cane for five. I'm up to nine gold, close to four gold away from 13. And now because I crossed the ship line, did I cross the ship line? No, I was a crew up. I did not cross the ship line. So, uh, yeah. So now it's uh, going to be Yellow's turn. Yellow has not buried treasure yet. Rolls a two. It's going to come all the way over here, cross the ship line, and perform a search targeting orange. And it didn't get anything. There's nothing for it to search, so it got nothing out of that turn. 
and now it's up to me to move the merchant ship so I'll move that there move that there Navy ship attacks yellow who retreats jostles and moves up here gray rolls a one gonna be performing a plunder crossing the ship line gains a cube Okay, it got a free booty, so it now has a rum and a gunpowder. Nope, that's it. Sorry, that's its third cube. It has, so the third cube, he's going to sell off his best resource, which is gunpowder. He is going to make 10 gold on this trade, which will cross the threshold. He's going to automatically bury treasure at the nearest space, which is right here. He doesn't spend 12 gold, he just spends all of his gold and goes down to zero. So he has buried his second treasure. Gray is the ship to beat. Even though Gray is not strong when it comes to attacking, he just got attacked by the Navy ship. Uh, even though he's not strong when it comes to attacking, he is doing very well. He's in the lead right now. He's the, he's the player to beat. I've got to pick up my game here. Up to round 13. Should, where am I? I could attack Gray again. I think I could easily defeat it. And that would get me four gold moving up to Swashbuckler. And then I'm going to be rolling three dice for my attacks subsequently to that. So I am going to go ahead and block spaces and move my captain to attack. Come down south to gray. Attack gray and hope I do well here. A two and a five. Good for two hits? Oh, the five is... Oh, God. Uh, yeah, I know what deckhands assigned to cannons, so that's one hit, two hits only. Uh, oh, well. Oh, and Gray's rolling three. Gray's rolling three because it's buried two treasures, but he rolled a four and a six, which does nothing for him. I actually sunk him. Two hits to zero. Wow, what a what a good stroke of luck. Oh my gosh, I wasn't even realizing that he was up to rolling three dice. I probably wouldn't have done this if I knew that. But I got lucky. Okay, so I got four gold out of it. I am now in a position to bury my next treasure. And I can perform bonus actions associated so I can sail essentially with Mur Ursula Bain. Uh, Gray retreated to the nearest cove up here. Yellow's over here. Um, I don't know that I want to sail into a storm right now. I'm gonna, I think I'm going to stay put. I am not going to move. I'm just not going to use my bonus action. So we're going to move on to yellow. Five, going to, to attack me, oh gosh, and she's going to move, what, two, oh, only two, so three spaces, she is going to come to me, darn it, <sighs> darn it. Well, I guess I should have sailed into that storm. Here she comes. Rolling two dice. She gets five hits with a one and a four. She gets a bonus hit for attacking. 
Uh, five hits. I'll never get five hits. I am rolling three dice, though, but I'm rolled high. I only got, but I got four hits. My three is my best die. But she still beat me. So all my crewmen are going to end up jostled, and I will gain a surefire token as a consolation prize. Yellow finally buries a treasure. Okay. Remember, yellow, the bots always bury at the closest treasure space. So she's over here. She couldn't bury treasure here. So the closest space where she could bury treasure was over here. Moving on to gray. Oh, a couple bad turns here in a row for me. Gray is going to be attacking me. But I think I'm okay against gray. So come on, gray. Bring it on. Let's see what you can do. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, it's targeting green. Sorry, my apologies. That's my error. On five gray attacks green. Oh, and it's performing a crew up action, not an attack. I totally, uh, I was thinking of the uh, yellow bot. Gray attack, uh, crews up on, on, uh, on a five. So now he's got another die, Silent Seamus, which does not provide dice, but does provide one bonus hit. My turn. Well, I'm crossing the ship line any way I cut it. Do I want to hide out? Well, if I move to a space where I can bury treasure for 12, I think I want to search then. And I am here. I could make it up here and bury treasure for 12. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to take... Uh, this deckhand and block crew up, cross the ship line. I do have a deckhand on extort, so I'm going to get a gold for crossing the ship line, but that'll happen after I bury the treasure at the end of my turn. And then with my three points of movement, I want to get up here. I don't want to move into the storm, so I'm going to go north, then west, then north. I get a surefire token for my search, and I will bury 12 gold, and I've buried my second treasure. So it's me against gray at this point. Yellow is, uh, I'm sorry, gray rather is taking, oh, Navy ship attacked me? Yeah, it did. Well, that's all right. Okay, so it's me against gray for all intents and purposes. Moving on to yellow's turn. Yellow is going to be performing a search action. And gets a bonus of trade. Getting two gold from the search, it's going to trade it. It doesn't have cargo to trade. And it's up to me because it crossed the ship line to move the ships. So I'll move orange north, I'll move green north, and I will move the navy ship to yellow, going south, south, south. Navy's going to have to get jostled completely and hide out in a cove. Gray's turn. Gray rolls a six. It is going to be doing a double plunder. It has one cargo, so that means it is going to be trading its best resource. It's going to get some 
possibly some serious gold out of this. It's targeting green. No, on a six, it always targets me. Sorry, that's wrong. It does a double plunder. It's selling two cubes of rum for five cubes each. Are you serious? Is that going to bring it up to 10? Holy. Oh, Gray just gained 10 gold. And it gets attacked by the Navy. But it doesn't care. It just gained 10 gold. It is five gold away from winning this game. And where am I? I'm at zero. Oh, my God. But I do have three Surefire tokens. <laughs> so I think I want to attack. That's my best chip. Because if I attack and successfully... Oh, I'm, oh, that's, only, I'm only good, that's only good for one Surefire token. I need to get up to Dreaded Pirate to gain eight gold. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. I think I do want to attack. So I'm going to block two spaces, move to attack, move over to gray. Again, it's hiding out, but I think that only protects it against the Navy ship. The rules don't say anything about protecting it from other bots, other players. So I'm going to attack gray and at least move up one level, but I'm not going to get anything out of moving up one level, other than the fact that I'll have four points of movement. Come on, three dice. Uh, I got a two and three. Three is my best. Do I need to use a surefire token? On a two and a three, probably not. That's good for one, two, three, four, five. I don't think I need to. I'm going to go with five hits. Got three hits on a one, three, and a six. So I defeated it. I advanced a level. I crossed the ship line, but I'm not getting any gold from that. So all I did was raise my legend level. And Gray retreats into a cove. I just need to attack on my next turn, but I'm not going to be able to. Well, I will be able to if I perform a search, because I can bonus attack. So that's my game plan. Moving on to yellow. Five, it's going to crew up. Nope, sorry, it's going to attack me. Uh, oh, this will be interesting. This will be very interesting. Here it comes. It only has two dice, however. It rolls a three and a one, scoring five hits. Two, 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 with the possibility of using a surefire token. Well, that's one, two, three, four, five, six hits, easily. No need for a surefire token. I won the battle. I advance and gain eight gold. It gets completely jostled, hides out into a cove. That was a great stroke of luck for me. So now I, I'm neck and neck here with Gray. Gray's at 10 gold. I'm at 8 gold. I'm, we're both 5 gold away from winning the game. Well, at least sinking our, burying our third treasure. It is, let's see what Gray does. Gray rolls a 4. That's going to be an attack. Targeting green. Doesn't reach green. Nothing happens. Whew. Round 16. I... Well, do I want to attack? I could hide out and do what I did before and just... Yeah, that's probably safer. And I'll get four gold out of it. So I think I will hide out. I could hide out on this space, or I can move, this space is taken, this, 
space is farther away from yellow, although I did win against yellow last turn. I think I'm going to move, I'm going to use my movement and move over here and hide out over here. Reassign all of my deck hands to extort. That'll get me up to 12 gold. That's all I need to bury treasure. I think unless Gray pulls a fast one, I might be able to pull this off. I am going to get attacked, but I'm hiding out, so I don't get attacked by the Navy ship. Okay, I think I may pull this off. Yellow is a two. It's going to trade. It has nothing to trade. It's going to get a bonus action, and that's it. I have to move the merchant ships. And Navy is going to attack yellow and force it into a cove. Okay, the question is, what is gray going to do here? Could gray possibly gain five gold in one shot? Well, he's done it before. Uh, what's his cargo? Oh, but he, he only has one sugar cane, which is selling at four. He could get a plunder. Oh man, let's just see. I, I, uh, let's just see what happens. It's close. He got, oh, not plunder. He got search. No, he got plunder. He is going to plunder because he only had one deck hand to block, so he could only make it to the plunder space if he plunders a sugar cane. No, he he'll only have two cubes, so he will not sell off. He gained a gunpowder. That could have easily been the end. He's getting attacked by the Navy ship. He retreats. Where did he retreat to? Because I'm hiding out here. Yellow's hiding out here. He retreated all the way over here. Okay, all I have to do is get to a treasure space, and I've won. And I can move to search. So I am going to uh, block the crew up space, move to search. I only have 12 gold. I want to move down here into a storm so a deckhand gets moved into repair. And now I'll end. I do get a search out of it. And now that was a negate one storm. And I can bury my 12 gold. But like I said, because I'm playing a three player game, I assume that the game does not end immediately. So Gray is going to have one last shot. And he could potentially pull it off. He could he put, could potentially tie, in which case we come down to a tiebreaker. Now, the tiebreaker is a little interesting, and let me talk about that. Not necessarily assuming that's what's going to happen here, but let me bring up the rules and talk about what happens in the case of a tie when you're playing a multiplayer game. So in the case of a tie in a multiplayer game, if players are tied, the tied player with the highest legend level wins. Well, well, bots don't really have a legend level, so when I'm playing a solo game, I ignore this tiebreaker. If still tied, the tie player with the most gold would be the winner, but I ignore that rule because bots always lose all their gold, whether they bury at 12 or 13, or do I? I can't remember what I decided to do. Maybe I do use that, that tiebreaker. Possibly I do. I wasn't sure whether I should adapt the rules to ignore this tiebreaker and just assume booby, most booby on the ship uh, breaks the tie. Uh, whatever the case, first it's Yellow's turn. Let's see what Yellow does. 
rolls a six, it's going to get a special action. It's going to do a, a quadruple explore, but there aren't many search tokens left. So yellow really had a poor showing today, buried only one treasure. Question is, what is gray going to do? Rolls a three. Uh-oh. It's going to perform a trade. Its best is sugarcane. Good for four gold. It's going to come up short. It's going to be 14. And its bonus on trade is to perform a search. Uh, is it going to make it to a search space? Who's it targeting on a trade? It's targeting the green ship. It's not going to be landing on a search space, so I think it's going to end with a trade. It's going to end with 14 gold, just one gold shy of tying it up. I think I, I pulled this off. Sell sugar cane for four, got to 14. That ends the round. And I win it by the skin of my teeth. So uh, this, these, this turned out to be the right kind of settings for my level of play. Like I said, don't watch this to see an expert uh, playing the game, but you got a good sense as to how the solo game works, how the game in general works, and hopefully you got a sense as to how you could possibly adapt the rules to play with more than one bot. If you're familiar with the game, Please, I welcome any feedback. If you saw my program do something illegally or if you think I've misinterpreted the rules in any way, please make comments. Uh, and if you have any comments about my thoughts when it comes to playing against multiple bots, I would love to hear those as well. Otherwise, thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoy the playthrough. Please like and subscribe. Bye-bye.